Okay, we're going to read chapter six of Because of the Rabbit by Cynthia Lord. And the publisher is Scholastic. Thank you, Scholastic. But let's talk about chapter five. So chapter five, she's at school and she sees her little homeschool friend, Shona, helps her um, get to her class. And then she um, is in a group of four. Remember, um, they all have four letters. She thinks that might be a good thing. Jack, Leah, and Iris. But then she finds out that Iris and Leah have known each other since they were little. And um, then they have they play that game, uh, Two Truths and a Lie. And um, they f the other kids do it, and then uh, she does it. And her lie is that she loves dill pickles, or she loves pickles. But the kids think that it's weird that she um, had frogs in her bathroom. So she changes it. She changes her lie to that. So that's not good, because I think sometime it's going to come out that she lied about that. Okay. So this chapter, and so the end is um, they have to do a group project, and Leah and Iris are going to do theirs together, and she has to, she's going to do it with um, uh, uh, Jack. That's his name, Jack. And um, remember, he's kind of a blurter, and so she thinks it might be hard to work with him. And she's kind of upset that it, happened so fast and she didn't really even get to say what she wanted to do. Okay, so this chapter is called A Pet Rabbit's Diet Should Consist Mostly of Grass Hay. School definitely had some fun parts, but it was exhausting. In homeschool, Mom had always given me a list of things to do every day and I had to finish each one, no matter how long or how short it took. But here, school was by clock. Just when I was getting into science, it was time to switch to math. It seemed like I was always putting books away in my desk and taking others out. And yet, even with all that switching, whenever I looked at the clock, I couldn't believe more time hadn't passed. And it was hard to pay attention after a while. I'd wondered and planned so much for my first day, and now I didn't know if I'd last through it. It was a relief when it was finally lunchtime. Now I could work on making a friend. As we lined up to go to lunch, Mrs. Ms. Hutton said, Remember that as fifth graders, you no longer have assigned seats in the cafeteria. The back tables are all yours, and you can choose whatever seat you want. Everyone cheered, so I did too. Stepping into the cafeteria, I was nearly knocked over by how loud it was. Kids were talking and laughing and banging trays, down at their seats. It was like they had been saving up all the noise all morning. And it smelled like lots of food mixed up together, like french fries and pizza with a dash of tuna. There were lots of rules. Where to pick up your silverware, how to order, which line to get in for different things. I could barely tell which line, each line, where each line ended. And I accidentally got into the drinks line twice. Even so, I forgot to get a straw. Uh, the Lakeview Elementary School cafeteria seemed like a huge kid traffic jam. When I finally got up to the lunch counter to choose what to eat, I didn't even know what some of the foods were. So I picked a square of pizza, carrot sticks, an apple, and a plop of whatever uh, what I hoped was chocolate pudding. I should have pick, shouldn't have picked the apple, though. It wobbled on my tray every time I moved, making it hard to walk very fast. Being able to sit anywhere might have seemed special to the other fifth graders, but whoever made that rule wasn't thinking about new kids. Standing in the middle of the cafeteria holding my blue plastic tray, I didn't know where to go. Leah and Iris were the only girls I'd really met so far, and they were already sitting at a full table of girls with no room for me. Just sit down. Maybe you'll make a friend. I took a deep breath and froze a smile on my face, walking through the maze of tables to find an empty seat. When I got there, I saw a notebook on the chair. Sorry, a girl said, 
That seat saved. The next empty seat had a baseball cap on it. The longer I walked around, the more seats were filling up. I wanted to hide my tray somewhere and sneak back to the classroom where I had my own desk, but I didn't think we were allowed to do that. Finally, I picked one of the empty tables in the far back of the cafeteria with no one else there. The first day is the hardest. I'll bring my own lunch tomorrow. Then I can sit with someone faster. But as I was sitting down, my foot hit the table leg and my apple wobbled right over the lip of my tray. It bounced once on the table, dropped to the floor and rolled under the table next to mine. I knew I should find it and throw it away, but climbing under tables wouldn't be a good first impression. Owen had said, other kids didn't give you too many chances before they wrote you off as weird. I took a bite of my pizza, hoping no one had noticed the apple. Maybe I could find it after lunch was over. At least I had something to do now, eat. <clears throat> but even that's hard when you're feeling bad. The pizza crust was really chewy and the milk didn't help wash it down. Jack set his tray at the seat beside me. School ends at 2.40. Hi, Jack. I glanced at the clock above the serving window. How could there still be so much time left? I imagined Mom at home. She often did her own work as a freelance designer in the morning between our lessons. But now was when Mom usually made herself a cup of tea and we read together. I wondered what she'd do today. And what was Lappy doing? I couldn't help feeling jealous that Mom and Lappy got to spend the day together. I looked down at my tray. I was glad to have Jack beside me, but also concerned. Owen had said to pick your first friends carefully, and Jack didn't seem to have many friends either. I didn't necessarily want to be super popular, but I wanted the other kids to get to know me before they decided. None of those other kids had saved me a seat, though. Another boy came over to our table. He was wearing a camo t-shirt and looked like he couldn't wait for lunch to be over either. Hi, Jack, he said. I smiled at him. Hi, I'm Emma. He nodded. I'm Dustin. Nice shirt. I couldn't think of another thing to say, but maybe he'd say you too. Thanks, Dustin said and started eating. Glancing around at the other kids in the cafeteria, I felt like our table was the leftovers table. Leah and Iris were laughing with four other girls. Watching them, I couldn't help wishing I was over there. From the corner of my eye, I saw an apple shoot past my foot. It rolled across the floor. Uh-oh, was that mine? Dustin kicked it. The apple went skittering past me like a little red soccer ball and under another table. That table started laughing. A girl at that table kicked it and the, t and the apple rolled off toward another table. I looked at the teachers patrolling the room. They were all busy talking to each other or helping the littlest kid, kids tie shoes or open milk cartons. I could feel my face getting hot. Even though I hadn't done anything wrong on purpose, I'd started it. I picked up a carrot stick from my tray. My rabbit likes carrots, I said, pretending we were just having a regular conversation and I hadn't seen the apple. Carrots are high in sugar and should only be fed to rabbits as an occasional treat. Jack replied, Really? I felt awful that I'd given them to Lappy, but occasional doesn't mean never. <clears throat> Grass hay is their main food. It helps wear their teeth down, Jack continued. If rabbits don't wear their teeth down, they just grow and grow. I opened my mouth to say that we had given Lappy hay, but a woman's voice said, How was your How's your first day been, Jack? I turned to see Ms. Martell behind me. Emma has a rabbit, Jack replied. I asked how your first day had been, Jack, she said. What do you say when... He sighed. My first day has been good. Emma has a rabbit. That's good. That's great, Miss Martell smiled. I'm glad you're having a, fir a good first day. And how fun that Emma has a pet rabbit. I'm sure that gives you a lot to talk about. What is the rabbit's name? Monsieur Lapin, I said. It comes from stories my papé used to tell me about a trickster rabbit. Silly rabbit, Jack said. Tricks are for kids. I giggled. I didn't know if he meant to tell a joke, but it was funny. Whose apple is this? A loud voice asked. One of the teachers was holding my apple by the tiny stem. It wasn't round anymore. It had chunks missing from being kicked around the room. 
There was a lot of snickering. I opened my mouth to say it had been an accident, but no words would come out. My heart tightened, waiting for some kid to point at me, but no one did. Don't leave a mess for someone else to clean up, the teacher snapped, throwing what was left of my apple in the trash can. You can get ready for recess now. Just be sure your trash gets in the can. I was so grateful lunch was over that I was one of the first kids to take their tray to the trash cans. There were several different colored cans next to a bin of soapy water on the table. The soapy bubbles were so thick that I couldn't see what was inside. Let's go, one of the lunch ladies said to me. You have a long line behind you. It was a mistake to be first. I bit my lip hard to keep tears from starting. Food in blue, Jack chanted behind me. Trash in black. Recycling in gray. Silverware in the soap. Thank you. I put my silverware in first and then realized I had nothing to use to scrape my extra pudding off the tray. I had to take my spoon out of the soapy water to use it. Why hadn't I asked Jack to go first? When my hands were finally empty, I had soapy bubbles on my fingers and my heart was pounding. I wiped my hands on my jeans and sat back in my seat waiting for someone to tell me I could leave. I didn't belong here. Maybe it had been a mistake to come. I'd never felt this unhappy in homeschool, even without Owen. School ends at 2.40, Jack said again. I looked at the clock with him. I can't wait. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, bummer. Her first day is kind of hard. Bye.